concerns. The other constraints, for now, it is what we call non-negativity constraints. In future, we might see integer constraints, uh, binary constraints. All these constraints, they are they arise out of the quantitative nature of the model. So in this case, uh, just take note that we will always require the variables to be non-negative. So we insert greater equal to zero here. Okay, so x1 comma x2 greater equal to zero. That's fine. Why greater equal to zero? Why can't they be negative? Well, because we don't want a solution where somehow maybe the computer software maybe excel says manufacture negative two doors so how do i do that i can't do that maybe what that means is to salvage melt two doors salvage the glass material use the glass material to make more windows right that, that's insane that's not possible so um while you might be thinking, is there some problems that we might actually uh, want to ignore the non-negativity constraints? Uh, just forget about it, right? So 99.99% of the time, we will always insist that, uh, or the way we phrase the model will be such that all the variables will be non-negative. Okay, so, so always stick it in, always having this non-negativity constraints for all the variables, not even any exception. Now that leaves us with the rest of the two sections up here, which is variable definition and objective function. Objective function is easy. We talked about maximizing or minimizing a business variable, a desirable business variable, an outcome that we want to see increased or decreased. So we talked about profits here. Uh, if one window gives us $5 profit, then X1 number of windows, we don't know how many is X1, but x1 number of windows will give us five times x1 dollars makes sense right uh one door sells for seven dollars profit x2 number of doors will give us seven x2 dollars of profit and do we want to maximize glass window profit or glass door profit no we want to maximize the sum total so it could be we don't know but it could be that the optimal solution is zero don't make any glass window make 10 glass doors or make three glass windows make five glass doors or you know various combinations we don't know and we don't want to know by our manual calculations we want to formulate it and then use computer software in our case we'll use excel to solve this okay so the main uh, skill or know-how that we are building up here is translation ability. Listen to the uh, business problem, translate it to this form, the LP formulation form. Okay, so objective function, two parts, maximize or minimize the objective function. Finally, we have the all-important variable definition save the best for the last so we have to declare variable definition first and these are called decision variables okay they are called decision variables they are not algebraic variables in the sense that you solve for them you know some kind of uh, equation and you cancel cancel and then you find but rather they are they are variables whose values are to be searched and determined uh, in a space that will be constrained or limited by all the inequalities. In fact, everything, right? Regular constraints and other constraints. So in this space, we search. I mean, we, I don't mean we, but computer will search for a combination of X1 and X2. All the various combinations that allow us to give the maximum amount of profits. Yeah, okay. So how do we define, how do we write the decision variables? Almost like calculus, right? Almost like algebra. Let x1 be equal to the number of glass windows to make in a week. Let x2 be kind of repetitive, glass doors to make in a week. But you have to say them clearly like that. Uh, notice that I underlined two kinds of, two, two categories of words in each definition of the decision variable. The point here is that you have to make sure that at least 
these two attributes are there in the definition of each decision variable. Now, what are these two attributes? It's the unit. Okay, it's the unit. Here, our x1, when somehow Excel finds a solution, says 5, right? We come back to this definition. We know that the 5 means actually 5 glass windows, not 5,000, not 5 crates, not 5 lorry trucks of glass windows. You see, because if you don't state it clearly, someone finding the answer might come back and say, I'm sorry, by the way, you mean uh, 5 what? What's the unit for this X1 definition? So that's no good. When we write the model, we seek clarity. That means there is no doubt how, about how to interpret the value of X1. Okay, so it is the number. And the next attribute that you must pay attention and you must write it in is the time duration. The time duration. Uh, these two, the unit and the time duration, by far is a very will be very common across all kinds of decision variables that I will insist that you must always put them in. Okay, so make sure the unit is very clear. No doubt about it. Make sure the time duration is very clear. So suppose I say, let X1 be the number of glass windows to make finish. So when I solve it from Excel, I get X1 equals to 5. Now I wonder, okay, fine, I need to make 5 glass windows. But how long do I take? Is it that every hour I make, or every day I do that, or do I stretch it across a month, or over a year? I have no idea, right? So what am I going to do? I have to come back to you again and say, I'm sorry, when you write this, do you mean to do this at what kind of rate? Uh, within a week, within a day, within an hour? So again, it's ambiguous. When it's ambiguous, your model kind of fails and you get marks deducted, you will not be appreciated by your boss, you know, all kinds of negative things will happen. So, minimally, keep in mind to always include the unit and the time duration, okay? At other times, we may have to include additional attributes, like when. So, X1 is the number of glass windows to make in a week on Monday, all right? And X... 1, 2 is the number of glass windows to make in a week, or rather in a day, on Tuesday. Or it can be X1 is the number of glass windows to make in a week in January, right? Because there are seasonal fluctuations, so the number of glass windows to make in January is different from those in, December, uh, in June. So it depends on the, the scope and the context, but minimally, all right, I will stress that you must put in unit and the time duration. Okay, so just to give you some sense of uh, what we are looking for. Now, once you have laid out the four sections like this here, in this sequence, in this manner, then you are done with LP formulation. All right, so then you say, but wait, I still don't know what is the optimal solution for X1 and X2. What should the numbers be? We haven't solved it, but you're getting a lot of marks, all right, or a lot of appreciation or a lot of credits for being able to listen to the business owner's uh, narration or else uh, appreciate the ground and assess the situation and translate that situation into this LP formulation. That's a great accomplishment. I want you to recognize that we appreciate it. Customer appreciates it. Management appreciates it. Right? Why is that so when we actually don't know the solution yet? Well, that comes in the next section where we'll use Excel to uh, solve problems. Okay, to come up with a solution. And when we do that, it is, it is kind of fun, it is cool, but it is also like a calculator. We just press buttons and program the Excel and out comes the answer. So that part is can be done rather easily with training, right? But this part needs a lot of human assessment and uh, translation skills are not um, necessarily easy to acquire uh, for a broad span of uh, different industries and scopes. So this is the part where you value add a lot, all right? So this is a major contribution, major output from you. I need you to appreciate this rather than to focus just on uh, uh, 
of wooing and wowing over getting the optimal answers because that part once you have this done is very straightforward as i'll show you in the next section so stick around and we'll be able to uh, do the fun stuff of using excel to solve the model